think we're on a road trip in case you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> it started out that we're going up to visit Jessica's brother and our sister-in-law, Michael and Cher. If we're gonna do it, we're gonna make a whole trip out of it. On the way to Rhode Island, we are going to stop at a place called Seven Springs Resort. Oh man, this is this is wild. She's laughing. Oh. We're pulling off the exit right now into Hershey. We're like eight minutes away. Crazy. This is huge. This is, this is wow. beautiful. We have checked into our room at the Hotel Hershey. Hello, hello. we made it to Newport. We got yeah. we got in last night, like what, like 9.30? Also, the Michael and Cherry here. Hey. The ones are visiting. So tell us about the history, Michael. Yeah, picture of you originally built in 1830. Built in 1742. 1799. 1723. The undisputed giant among giants in Newport is the Breakers. It's such a nice day. And then we're going to go over to Martha's Vineyard today, which I am very, very much looking forward to. We are on the road. We're headed to Boston. We're headed to the Freedom Trail in Boston. We're on board the USS Constitution. It is the oldest commissioned warship in the United States Navy and in the world. Battle of Bunker Hill, uh, which was actually fought on Breed's Hill here in Charlestown, Massachusetts. What started out as a short weekend trip to visit Jessica's brother turned into a two-week, 2,000-mile road trip all over America's Northeast. On top of visiting Uncle Mikey and Aunt Cher in Rhode Island, we hit up some spots in Pennsylvania, made our way north through Massachusetts and Maine, saw some sights in New York, and for good measure, we tacked on two days in Niagara Falls. Before we knew it, we had built ourselves, dare I say it, an epic road trip full of historical sights, unforgettable scenery, and lots of beer, wine, and whiskey. We braved snowy roads and we enjoyed sunny weather. We toured mansions and ate in taverns older than our country. We explored amazing sights, learned a lot, and laughed even more. So pack your bags and come along. It's time for a Braun family road trip. Well, good morning, boys and girls. On today's episode of Tyler Humble Brags about going on an early morning run, uh, I am at the Boston Common, uh, which is a beautiful green area kind of in the middle of the city uh, in Boston. I don't know if it's in the middle of the city. Anyway, uh, it is unbelievably beautiful. Uh, let me show you the view today. <laughs> this is the view today on my run. Can you just believe that? It's just so beautiful. Oh, good way to start the day. <laughs> On the way here, I was looking on my maps on my phone, trying to figure out how to get here from our uh, from our Airbnb, and so I was kind of <laughs> wandering around the streets, and I, I couldn't really figure out how to get here finally, because it was like one mile from our Airbnb, and by the time I got here, I had ran two miles, so I got so lost, but it was perfect, because I just got to see some really cool areas of Boston that I may not have seen. I kind of went down some random <laughs> alleys and stuff, so I ain't mad about it. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool way to see a city, just to kind of run around and because you're kind of slow, you know what I mean? Especially if you run like I do. Um, but you know, it's just kind of a cool way to see a city that is just a little bit different from just walking around. And I don't know, just, uh, it's one of my favorite ways to kind of get acquainted with the city. Okay, so we're headed to breakfast. Um, we, uh, it's a place called Theo's that we kind of, that we just looked at, it was close by. And yeah. you're saying the chef has been the chef there for like 30 Apparently years? Apparently Theo's been cooking there for 30 years. And That's still cooking there. That's very cool. That is That's very cool. So we, just, so we just kind of looked up a place and picked it at random because we were hungry. It had really good reviews. Um, but this is, I just love wandering these streets here in Boston. These streets are so cool. It's historic North Especially in the North Beautiful. Yeah. We were just talking about how we feel like we're on like a movie set, like back here. Yeah, that'd be cool. Tyler. Like, doesn't it look like a movie set? It's just crazy. Yeah. So we're getting some breakfast at this place called, what's this place called? Cafe Little Italy. Cafe Little Italy. Um, mostly because we need a room for four of us and the other places where like wine's out the door. Um, but it looks really good. Cool. It smells like amazing coffee in here. All right, we just finished breakfast mm -hmm. um, and we're about to, we're gonna spend like the rest of the day doing the Freedom Trail, like yeah. Michael's gonna be our guide. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're right, I mean, we're standing now by the church, uh, so he's gonna tell us about that and stuff, yeah. which is cool too. So we're at the Old North Church. Oh, hold on, by the way, so Cafe Little Italy, right there, that's where we just Actually ate. pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was it was pretty good, and that's where we ate uh, a little little breakfast. Yeah. And Here's right quick, across the street a quick here, drink and a quick sandwich. Sandwich. this is the Old North Church, which yeah. is part of the uh, uh, Freedom Trail. And Michael's gonna tell us a little bit about it, Michael. <laughs> 
Yeah, so established in 1723 as Christ Church, now known as the Old North Church here in the north end of Boston. On that fateful night, April 18th, 1775, uh, vestrymen and the sexton of the church, uh, two gentlemen that were employed by Paul Revere himself, uh, to be sent to walk all the way to the top of the bell tower and actually place one lantern if the British were going to be marching by sea. Um, or one if by land, I already messed it up. <laughs> Two if by sea. Um, and that night, uh, Paul Revere's house, which is just a few blocks away, he rode up and made sure the guys knew what to do. It's going to be two lanterns because they were going to cross the Charles River into Charlestown, where we were yesterday. Uh, and they went up there and held out the two lanterns, and the men over in Charlestown across the river saw it and they knew immediately what was going on and they could start passing the message. <sighs> Pretty amazing. So cool. So cool. From the Old North Church, we stroll along the Freedom Trail to the house of the man who made that place famous, Paul Revere. All right, so we're about to go in the Paul Revere house. They say no photography or video inside, but this is the outside of it. Michael, tell us, who is Paul Revere? I, you know, I heard of him. Uh, I think he was the president. Uh, <laughs> he was president local, from uh, 1782. Yeah, he was a local silversmith. Um, According to most accounts, he actually wasn't that phenomenal of a silversmith, but he's a silversmith uh, <laughs> nonetheless. Um, this is his house. He lived in, according to the sign, 17, uh, 1770 to 1800, so about 30 years. That's um, So this time. is the house that he lived in, the house that he slept in with his wife, and the house that he left the night of... Thank you. Don't make that weird. <laughs> the house that he left the night of his midnight ride, April 18th, 1775. That's so cool. And didn't he, have, didn't he have like 16 kids or something like he that? He had quite a few kids, yeah. I'm That's sure crazy. More in here, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, so if you cool. want to see inside of it, you got you got to come all the way to uh, to Boston to see it because I won't be able to film inside. But uh, it's uh, it's a re it's really cool. I mean, again, it's just right here in the middle of everything. Boston is the coolest city. Michael was just saying that this is his favorite gift shop in all of Boston. And I guess the guy... It's like been owned for like four generations. The guy in there, he gave us a great recommendation for lunch. Yeah, and it's, this is the Paul Revere house right here. And uh, it's located right next to it. And yeah, the guy... Oh, cool. Um, but Michael said when he was here a couple years ago, he had he this guy gave him a recommendation for lunch and it was awesome. And he just gave me some more recommendations. So he found out I was in the Navy, called me out, which is pretty remarkable. <laughs> so the Marin House right here is an actual bed and breakfast for Navy. You can stay there sixty dollars a night. Navy what? Included. That's Sorry, so cool. Guys, I wish you would have known. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So let's see. Yeah. So Sherry just bought that. It's so cute. And then I'm at the boy version. Boy. Classy. Boy mom. <laughs> it's kind of cool that we're doing this right outside Paul Revere's house. Like, oh, yeah. Paul, really cool. Also, yeah, Paul Revere once slept here. <laughs> After filling our minds with some early morning American history, we made our way to the famous Mike's Pastry to have what, honest to goodness, was the best pastry I've ever had in my life. Making a quick pit stop here at Mike's Pastry. A lot of people recommended that we go to Mike's Pastry. It was that uh, and Modern Pastry were more of you guys recommended Mike's, Mike's Pastry. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Very cool. But we uh, we were here last night and the line was like out the door. But then today we just got here and there's like no line. I mean, there's a bunch of people, but they're all like a group. But there's like no line, it's awesome. So we're gonna get some cannolis and maybe some other stuff. We're gonna see. All right, what all we get? We got a lot. We're all sharing. We got two chocolate chip cannolis, one lobster tail. Which is Yeah. One thing to note is that they accept cash only. That's something to keep in mind. Um, but let's see what we got here. All right, so that's the uh, okay. That's two chocolate chip cannolis. Oh my gosh! And then the lobster tail. Let me see, let me see the lobster tail. Look at this pastry. I mean, the way they do it is beautiful. You said you think it's kind of like a cream horn, right? Like it's got like cream in the middle there, and that pastry. The horn of cream. This is heavy. It's dense, baby. Look at this. I'm just gonna like rip some. Oh. How's that cannoli? Good? Good stop, guys. Good stop. Good up. This is freaking Can't wait. All right, we came by here. This is the Green Dragon Tavern. We came by here yesterday, but it was way too packed. So we're going to try and hop in and get a beer. But you were saying, like, this is, like, where, like, a ton of revolutionaries we met. So this is where the Sons of Liberty used to meet. So the likes of uh, Samuel Adams, John Hancock themselves would drink at the Green Dragon. Oh, Paul Revere frequented. Down the street. We just walked yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was rebuilt in 1828, unfortunately. 
Yeah, the original was located about a half a block to a block away from here, but this is very true to the, uh, the original Green Dragon. That's so cool. Very, very cool. So we're gonna go in and get a beer. Hospitality to the weary traveler. <laughs> All right, we were just reading uh, some of the history here, and you were saying that they, that this was the before and after party for the, for the Boston yeah, Tea Party. Yeah, for the Boston Tea Party, so um, they, I'm, I'm kind of picturing them ahead. They were just here kind of drinking, like, yeah, there's that dang ship in the harbor filled with all that tea that we're having to pay taxes on now. Anyway, they went down there, um, dumped the tea, and came back and had the after party here, which I think is kind of hysterical. <laughs> Um, but Jessica brought up a really interesting historical point that um, a young 13-year-old boy actually heard about the British mark that they were going to march on Lexington and conquer. Uh, and then the actual proprietor here informed the Committee of Safety of the Patriots there. And that sparked Paul Revere's right. A 13-year-old boy theoretically, theoretically saved America. Overheard. Great America. Unbelievable. Yeah, this give is some, very, give some very some credit. Sam Let's Ballard was that his boy, name. Adam. Is that a thing? That's it. Back on the Boston Freedom Trail, we made our way to the Old State House, the site of the Boston Massacre. So, hold on. What, what hall is this? What is this actually? Old State Capitol building. Old State Capitol, okay. Uh, this is where the Boston Massacre occurred. Um, here on this balcony, you see um, on July 18, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was first read to the people of Boston. And then years later, after we won our independence, John Hancock gave a speech as the first elected governor of the state of Massachusetts. So cool. That is very cool. We went into the uh, the state house here, and it was cool, but we only went into the gift shop because it was like, like what, 12 bucks $12 for per museum. person to go to the museum. We still got other sites to see, and we're only here for a couple more hours, so we're like, yeah, we're going to skip this one. We'll save that one for next time. Um, so now we're headed to, uh, was it the granary? Yeah, the old granary burying ground. You see quite a few famous people that are buried there. Sweet. So we're at one of our last stops here along the Freedom Trail. We're at the uh, the old granary burial ground. Yeah, burial all right. Ground. I mean, there's a ton of people buried here, but who are, who are some of the highlights? Yeah, so uh, actually over here, we'll be coming up first. We have the uh, the victims of the Boston Massacre buried. Uh, next to them, they have Samuel Adams, the, the guy who grew beard himself. <laughs> uh, ben Franklin's parents are buried right there in the middle. Towards the back of the cemetery, you have Paul Revere. And then all the way on the left side, we'll get to a little bit later, is John Hancock. Oh my gosh. It's a who's who of revolutionary history. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> end our day in Boston where we began, at the Boston Common and Public Garden. Puritan settlers established the common in 1634, making it the nation's oldest public park. Here on this land, cattle once grazed and British soldiers camped. Today, it's a place for locals and visitors alike to relax and enjoy some nature in the heart of a busy city. Gigi, are you having fun crawling on the grass? Oh my goodness! She's never really crawled on the grass before. I don't think she really has. Oh. That's fun. What do you think, huh? It's nice. <laughs> Yay. Come here, girly girl. You're so little. It's like the first time she's ever crawling on grasses in the middle of Boston Common, or the, gar the, the gardens up, uh, over here, whatever. How cool is that, Gigi? How cool is that? Well, well, well. well where are we well. to the tapper? The tip tap, the tip -tap room. room. We're kind of, I don't really know where we are. Well, we're not far from, we're from, where, from where we stayed. We're stayed. Kind what of is, the center. Is this be the, no, that's not, that's not the back bank. That was no, a yeah, yeah, it's, we're it's the kind of this, We're right by the, we're right by the Massachusetts Hill. State Capitol building. Oh. Yeah, like two blocks from that, so. so. Ish, we're yeah. on the federal we're region. Boston. Um, and we're Massachusetts. <laughs> we're in the United States. Yeah, and these two, these two goons are about to head back to uh, a Newport way. Yeah, we're heading yeah. off to, uh, back to that horrible Newport. <laughs> that beautiful, beautiful. It really is an ugly town. Um, and we're headed to uh, uh, Portland, Maine. Oregon. Or Portland, yeah. <laughs> Portland, Oregon, from here. Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. One night drive. An hour 45. You got it a long way to go. <laughs> a day 45. Yeah, a day. Minimum. It's a year and 45 days. <laughs> <laughs> Around the world in 45 days. Wait. Yeah.
<laughs> and so, you do that's sleeping. Not a thing. Yeah. Sleeping hard. Sleeping so hard. <laughs> Hi, Gigi. She'll be knocked out. We'll see. Or she'll wake up right as we start. We're like, oh, oh, I thought that was. <laughs> It would be insane and very possible. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so there you have it, our 36 hours in Boston. How does one even begin to start talking about a city like Boston? Here, I've devoted two full videos to the city and we've not even scratched the surface. We went to Boston to experience the historical site of the city, which there is a lot of, but there were several sites even along the Freedom Trail that we didn't have a chance to visit. The, the State House, the Old Corner Bookstore, the Old South Meeting House, Park Street Church, and Copps Hill Burying Ground, just to name a few. But beyond the amazing amounts of history, there's an entirely other side to Boston, a side that unfortunately we didn't get to see this trip, and that's the Boston of today. This modern city is alive and well, full of passionate people, lively neighborhoods, and seriously the best pastry I have ever had in my life. That lobster tail is no joke. I know we'll be back to Boston someday, and I advise you do yourself a favor. Go to Boston. Take three days, five days, a week, a month, heck, move there for all I care, but get there at some point in your life. You can thank me when you get home. It's cold. Uh, 35. 35. We just came from like 65 degree it's, weather in yeah. Boston to this, so it's like. Also, we're in Portland, Maine. Did we talk about that? And it is beautiful. Juicy. Fun. <laughs> I'm just trying to get footage. This is so, so beautiful, but it is so windy.